is Kevin Mayo, and today we are drinking Stone Brewing 20th Anniversary, 6th Anniversary Porter. Now, I picked this up uh, like a week ago. It's been in my fridge about a week now. And uh, after I picked it up, I wasn't paying too much attention to the date. Uh, usually, I look at dates on IPAs. I don't worry too much about them on Porter's Stouts. Heavier beers, not even heavier beers, but darker, more robust beers like that. So, I, um, I happened to look at the date. I saw 4-6. I'm like, uh-oh couple months old now. Then I have to look again, 4, 6, 16. So this beer is a year and a half old, and, or a year and four months old. And I just bought it. I have no idea where it's been. I don't think it's been on a shelf in the store where I bought it at. They do a lot of turnover. So I, I don't know how it's been stored, how well it's been. There's a little thing on here that says drink it fresh or cellar it at 55 degrees. So I have no idea if this has been cellared or not. They stone for the first five years for their anniversaries were brewing hoppy IPAs. This was their first shot at another style. I'm looking at their website, talking about it now, it is uh, aged in different kinds of barrels, so it's oak aged, and then it's a traditional porter. So let's give it a crack, see what we got, because I have no idea where this review is going at this point. I have no preconceptions, which I don't usually have on a beer anyway, but. With a stone as an IPA, you typically know what it's going to be. Using an Imperial Bite class just because. And as always, if you like the reviews, please subscribe. We're always looking for new friends. And go ahead and leave comments. Well, we got a nice, tight, brown head on this. Three fingers. Just sitting there looking beautiful. I put it right in the bright light, I can see through it a little bit, but basically if I put it anywhere else, it's it's nice, opaque, can't see a thing through it. I don't know how many IBUs this is, or even what the ABV is on it now. 8% alcohol by volume. Let's do the aroma. So I get like a dark cherry. I also get it on my nose. That dark cherry and a little bit of the smokiness. But other than that, it's fairly subdued on the aroma. Let's do the taste. Wow. Wow. So it, wow, it definitely, the taste mod, mod, moderates as it goes along. There is a whole bunch of shit going down in this one. So first I get like creamy milk chocolate. And then it, in the first sip I didn't get this. But at the, the second sip, because it's been building, it finishes with really bitter black coffee. And it finishes quite bitter. Don't know if this is a uh, side effect of the aging or not. And then right after that creamy milk chocolate, you taste that dark fruit, uh, black cherry, And then in the middle of all that, you get the smokiness going on. So you got a lot going on here. You get that little bit of creamy milk chocolate. You get the really, really bit of black coffee. You get that nice smokiness in there. Mouthfeel is a little bit thin for this type of style. I would expect it a little bit, a little bit creamier. Doesn't have that creamy mouthfeel that you'd expect. So there's probably a couple other dark fig built in there too. Hint of the oakiness from the barrels. And just a hint, I mean that's way in the background. I guess the down, the one thing with this beer is just that bitter at the back end. And it's not the IPA bitter at the back of the throat. It's more like on the tip of the tongue, I think. 
So, score wise, oof. it's a really good beer. It's just that, like I said, I don't expect that bitterness. So I think that's more of a uh, an unexpected note rather than something I should really downgrade it for. Score wise, let's give this a solid 90 out of 100. Just squeaks into the A's. Till next time, keep drinking.